The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618 the trader's edge now steve rhodes good afternoon folks welcome to the january 14th the terrific Tuesday or Taco Tuesday edition of today's Traders Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. If you can't call in, no problem. We've got you covered there. Feel free to send me an email, Steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to. Lush show right now we got all indices trading in the green you've got the dow up 139 points about a half a percent to the upside the s p up five points about uh, near less than two two tenths of a percent nasdaq 100 really just turned it's flat it's up three points russell's up 13 points so there's your big mover and shaker semis are up nine tenths of a nine tenths of a percent that's 17 points out there transports trannies are up one and three quarters percent 148 points are trading out 11 to 11 out there spot volatility next back 24 cents uh, gold is off seven silver's down 24 cents lights we crewed up 24 cents We've got a lot of 24s out there uh, natural gas up uh, a nickel as we speak, that's a little over 2%. Leading the charge to the upside, Karuna Therapeutics up nearly 10 bucks. Rihanna Pharmaceuticals up nine. Restoration Hardware up uh, eight and change. i Holdings up eight. To the downside, it's Mercado Libre off 5%. That's $37. Amazon's off a little over 1% or 21 bucks. Mark Marietta down nine bucks or about 3.5%. Molina Healthcare down 6% or about nine bucks. The first question, the only question so far that has come in, the question is on the two hour chart for the NQ. Let's pull that over here, 120 minute time frame. I can do that math. And the question is, did this thing make a peak G? So if we do the uh, wave counts down here from this low on, uh, looks like January the 7th out here, we start doing our counts from there. Uh, the answer to your question is, yeah, I've got seven, I've got wave number seven as well out here, price pulled back. But what price did, John, in the pullback, so whenever we get a topping pattern or signal out here, in this case here, it's both a pattern and a signal, get into wave number seven. Uh, that is letter G on my uh, screen out there. It's the seventh letter of the alphabet. Uh, then what sellers have the right to do and what they should do to, to, for you and I to be able to determine their strength is push price down to support. Now, what we can see here is they did that. They accomplished that task, and they were not able to get it really below support. Now, granted, there was a candle close right here. Let's go take a look at it. This was at about, what, 9, uh, 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, so at the 10 o'clock hour, on a two-hour time frame chart, there was a close below. But Stevie likes to see uh, not one hit wonders. That means a second close below, and that is not what took place. Now, right now, we've got, in essence, a consolidation because price is trading between support which is going to be the low of that um, 10 a.m. Uh, session out here, and uh, resistance, which is Stevie's green line at the 90, 93 area. So it's kind of in the neutral stage. Is there a top? Yes. Did uh, sellers push price back to where they were supposed to? Yes. Did they break the backs of sellers? And the answer there, and that's really important, the answer there is no. 
In order to really break the backs of uh, sellers here, you probably got to close below 89.3250. There's several breakout steps along the way to the upside on the two-hour time frame chart. You've got 89.32, 89.84, and then above that, 9,375. No change in trend signal. Just simply, just simply a top. Uh, with a, a normal retracement back to a level of support. So I hope that answers your question with regard to the NQ for its two hour time frame. Of course, the bigger time frames, those are more important. If we take a look at the daily time frame, let's just go stick with the NQ. We can see that price, even though it's a beautiful thing, I mean, it continues to move higher. Uh, but it's doing so with less relative energy. Now, that only becomes a problem if a bearish reversal candle forms. But you might say, well, wait a minute, Steve-O. I hear you. I see you. I'm following you. Well, what about yesterday's dark cloud cover candle inside the NQ? Was that yesterday? That doesn't make any sense to me. That had to be Friday. 11.10. Yeah, this is a daily chart. There's something going on. I've, so I've been having some trouble with my data feed out here. It's a real bummer. Uh, not the day. I'm not sure what problems or issues were going are going on. Let me just, uh, John, before I, before, not so fast. I want to make sure that the intraday chart was picking up the right price, pretty close to it. Yeah, 90.83. We're at 90.85. Not sure why the a little bit of a delay there, but yeah, it it is. But for some reason, there's something messed up on the daily time frame chart. So I'm gonna have to reboot everything. Can't do that during the show, but. Um, uh, what we can do is just simply come on over here and take a look at what's going on with regard to the NQ. You can see it's made a, so there was your dark cloud cover candle. That was from January 10th. Um, but again, I, when we're taking a look at that chart, now I can pull this over. What Price was unable to do, Price was able, unable to close below Stevie's green line. That's really your first line in this case here because of its profiles. That's its first line of support. Price must close below that level uh, in order for um, in order to suggest because that line was green in order to suggest that there is a further retracement uh, for Jay in the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, here's what we can see. No new no new profile. So the one that we were looking at yesterday inside the ES mini for its daily time frame, in fact, did not form. Not surprising out there. Nothing new. The Russell 2000 is trying to join the ranks of the other three by uh, closing above the top of its daily profile. The top of its daily profile is basically where it's trading right now. That area is 1684. We're trading at 1684. We'll forget the change out here. Now, if price closes over 1687.80, that is the high from 2019, well, then it will join the ranks of the uh, bullish breakout scenario that the ESNQ and Dow have in place as we speak right now at 1.13 in the afternoon. So watch that 1687.80 area inside of the Russell 2000. We take a little bit of a, a picture, a snapshot of the health of the New York Stock Exchange. We're going to see panel number two in the center. That's the advanced client oscillator reading. That's taking a look at the uh, difference between the 19 and 30 nine day because we're looking at a daily chart here exponential moving average of the advanced decline line in for advanced decline info and it is above zero that's a little red line going in the center of that uh, chart there you're at 4691 that's bullish spot volatility is below its 50-day exponential moving average which is 1347 that's a bullish out there that ain't no bull steve Rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, right now, we've got the uh, Dow off 138, uh, off well, up 138. The S&P is uh, up about five. Uh, the Nasdaq 100 still basically uh, nearly unchanged for the day. I do see a number of questions that have come in. Uh, what I'm going to try to do during this, uh, really, while I'm on the air right here and everything else, oh, I see something popped up that I didn't necessarily intend for it to pop up. I was going to try to uh, maybe uh, see if I could get my other system here going. But uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, let's just go with what we've got, right? Uh, we can always come back. And so it looks like the first come in, first question coming in is from Robert B. And uh, uh, da, 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 da. so his question here, he's got some other comments, but not necessarily uh, more, more for me personally than for, for you. Uh, for all of us out here. My question relates to SLV. Do we have a change in trend on a long-term basis to the downside? So that would be, and what would be a good entry point to short silver? So um, I really do wish I had those other charts here to post, but um, but I don't. So let's go take a look at, and I wish I could find my cursor. That would also be a very helpful thing. What the heck is going on? Was it a full moon here recently or something? I think that it was. So let's go take a look at the uh, silver contract grab the information that we can. Um, let's put up the, let's look at silver this way. Uh, this will take just a moment to populate, but that's okay because it should give you a, a nice view, should give us a nice view of silver. For its daily, it's weekly, it's a monthly and it's quarterly time frame. but just simply taking a look at the profile levels. And what we're gonna be checking for here is in Robert's case, uh, he's asking, is there a change in trend? I, I really need my other tools to give us the patterns that are associated, but I believe that there is uh, for these different time frames. Now what we're just simply waiting for, excuse me, is for the profiles to populate. And uh, so we've got the uh, weekly, we've got the quarterly, and we've got the monthly. Now we're just waiting for these daily profiles to, uh, but what we do know is that price is back inside the weekly uh, profile out here, not seeing charts. Oh, well, thank you. 
let me uh, let me change that so that you can't see the charts. So there we go. So now you've got that. So now we've got the uh, charts up here. And so, yes, yeah, so price is below the bottom of its daily profile. That was a bullish structured profile. Uh, that is effective as of today. Now, the bottom of that uh, silver uh, profile, man, oh man, is, uh, let me get out here, is $17.92. So $17.92. So, Robert, as long as there is a close below $17.92 today, remember, we've got our little two-day rule out here. That would include tomorrow as well. Then what that suggests to both you and I is that, uh, and we'll use, I'll, I'll borrow one of Tom's expressions, and that is that silver's back in the range. What range is that? Well, on the weekly basis, it's the range of its TAS market profiles. The top of that box was 1805. The center which is closer to the bottom, meaning it's a bullish structured profile. This is where buyers are lined up on the weekly basis between 1695 down to the 1658 level. So this would suggest to me that the silver is headed down into that area. Price is above the top of its monthly profile, so that's nice, but that doesn't mean there can't be a pullback. And that pullback would be targeting the top of its profile. That's at $16.72 out there. But from, uh, so, so yeah, there's a, uh, there, there is and appears to be a change in trend. Let's see if I do this here. Give me a moment to uh, new chart. Let's see if we can get, uh, and I hate to do this during the show, but it, it, you know, I usually have everything set up, which I did have it set up. It just wasn't getting the right data feed. But I just want to try to get a, a chart here of silver populated. So if you'll just simply humor me for a moment um, let's pull up the March contract. Let's change this to a daily time frame. Uh, daily time frame. Let's go to Stevie's template here for the daily without the TAS profiles. And let's see what happens when this thing populates over here on my one of my screens. Um, okay, it would be good to populate. And let's see what price it comes up. Yeah. Comes up with 17.99. So this is showing yesterday's level, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and use that. So price is trading at 17.74 right now. What I also want you to notice here, um, Robert, is that the breakout level for silver was 17.81. That was based upon its most recent TD9 count pattern. And yes, this did form with bar number nine of that TD9 count. Price is now below the breakout level of 1781. And this would suggest that silver could pull back all the way to the 1682 area. Now, you would ask me about intermediate term, I believe. So I would have to change the weekly time frame, which I will do right here. Now, that oscillator and change line, I've got to change that just here for a moment until uh, during the break, I'll get things kind of uh, modified just a tad. Um, but uh, give me a second. What did I do there? Oh, uh, here's what I need to do. So now we take a look at the so on the weekly time frame for silver. In answering your question here, you can see that the actual top came in with a TD9 count, but that was way back on September 6, 2019. Um, 1787 is the number for it. That's its oscillator and change line. Price trade in 1775. So price is below that too. And all that suggests a uh, further retracement is in order here. So I know that was a long winded way of doing it, but it still was the accurate way to do it and to answer. So your question was, you know, where is a entry point? At this stage of the game, um, you know, I would have to say if you're going to go ahead and, and short silver, be $17.92. That's the bottom. It'd be between 1792 and 1803 out there. Um, I, I always cautious people. Yes, I have a bearish outlook for gold and silver, precious metals. But what's really important here, um, you know, and, and that should help you. Now, look, if you're trading that, and I know, Bob, you're good, look, I know you're an experienced trader and you're choosing the SLV out there. What I don't like about uh, that, so to speak, is the fact that, we know that gold and silver, certainly gold, um, they're going to move because of geopolitical events out there. And so in order to really take a short trade in those, uh, in those precious metals out there, I would think you have to say to yourself that all the geopolitical concerns out there are at least at a normal level. You know, what would that be? NORAD level number one or something? Who knows what? At a normal level versus, let's say, a heightened level. 
And I would have to say that we're, we're at a heightened level, so to speak, out there. So, yeah, everything is set up so that gold and precious metals want to continue to uh, pull back, the mining equities as well out there. But to actually go ahead and dip your toe in the water to take that um, short position at a time where what we clearly know, look, we clearly know, you and I, this is, there's, 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 there's no, there's no magic here. There, there's everybody that used to say and everybody that does say, you know, that uh, because of quantitative easing, gold is going to go to the moon. We know that that's a load of malarkey, right? Because that is not what unfolded out here. So don't try to confuse. I'm not saying you, Bob, and when I say you, I'm just us out there. Don't try to uh, talk yourself into that uh, the easy trade on gold or silver, precious metals is, geez, if we're printing money, it's got to go up. That's not how gold operates. That's not how silver operates. But Bob, in answering your question, yeah, looks like silver wants to head lower. Change in trend signal today. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're great. Right. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that is transforming into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow up 135, S&P is up five points. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from uh, Lee. Lee writes in and says, uh, I bought... Uh, Kronos, or C-R-O-N is a ticker symbol, 
uh, on a pullback this morning. Okay, give me your take on both the uh, short and longer term outlook. So let's move over here and take a look at uh, Kronos Group. C R O N is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, so the very first thing that we know, Lee, is that uh, price is trading below the weekly and monthly profile levels. So those are going to be your resistance areas. And that's going to be 790 and 836. Doesn't mean price can't retake those. Just know that that is your resistance level, the old bottom of a profile out there. If price can get above that area, then uh, that would suggest on the weekly and the monthly time frame chart that you would be targeting the center. Those are both bullish structured profiles out there. So then you'd be looking at your next resistance would be somewhere between 890 and 1022. Now, price is trading above the top of its uh, daily box right now. This could be the second day in a row. If it is, this would be the second day in a row since that box has been in effect. That would uh, kind of qualify as covering Stevie's two-day program out there. So your question was, can you give me your take on both the short and longer term outlook? So let's go take a look at the daily time frame. Uh, 774 is where it's printing. This chart does not have today's data out there. So let's just keep that in mind. This would suggest, now this did have a nice little uh, roads momentum indicator bottom pattern out there. That bullish engulfing candle back in, looks like November, give you the date. That was November the uh, 20th. So you got that nice bottom. And if in fact, Kronos is getting or CRO and is getting ready to uh, move the heck out of here. Its target on the daily time frame would be 1177. Uh, let me go take a look at the uh, weekly for you, see what's going on there. The weekly also has a roads momentum indicator bottom pattern out here. Its target to the upside would be 1241. Um, so, you know, but you still have those other areas. Hopefully you wrote those down on a pad of paper, your other areas of resistance. And then on the uh, monthly time frame, it shows that it looks like this may be a TD setup nine count bottom uh, that is uh, in effect out here. And uh, so, yeah, everything looks pretty good. Just know that you've got some resistance there, Lee, that uh, 790 and 830, 836, those are going to be your first real critical areas to get through. So uh, best of luck with that uh, trade slash investment. Uh, HD writes in and asks if we could take a look at PYPL. I believe that's PayPal out there. So let's do that. Let me uh, move over and change over my other charts, even though we're only looking at yesterday's data. The question is... Um, going long, uh, so there's two positions out here looking at. So in the case of PayPal, PayPal has, you know, clearly broken out and is up towards some highs out here or maybe trying to get back to its all-time highs. Price is above the top of the daily, price is above the top of the weekly. Looks like price is headed to the top of the monthly. That's 117.52. Uh, nothing to give us an indication whether price will be able to take that out or not, HD. So I don't see the reward risk set up here, knowing that you've got reason you're trading at 114.81, uh, knowing that you've got resistance in that 117.52 uh, level out there. Looks like on the daily time frame chart, this will become day number seven of a TD setup, nine count pattern. It did form in the case of PayPal, a nice road momentum indicator bottom with that hammer candle back on October the 23rd. Um, so the daily, the only uh, caution on the daily might be a TD nine count pattern that it could form. The weekly, this is going to be bar eight of a TD nine count out there. Um, so this also, we know that uh, if this pattern were to identify a top or a bottom, in this case here a top, that could occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Um, and on the monthly time frame chart here for PayPal, Price has begun moving higher, doing less relative energy out there. Um, so I would say, so in looking at PayPal, not that it can't move higher, and in fact, it should move higher. It should move up into at least that uh, one set, or I can't say at least, it should move up into that 117.52 range. But I don't see the risk reward there for you to take that type of a trade. S H A K. Uh, so let's go take a look at it. And this is a Shake Shack. So Shake Shack maybe, uh, you know, has more to offer. Maybe, maybe not. Let's go take a look at it. Here's what we know about Shake Shack. Right now, if this is going to break out, and when I say break out, I'm looking at a daily time frame chart. What we can see here is not since um, September 24th has Shake Shack been able to trade above resistance of its TAS market profiles, resistance being the top of the box. Now, Brand new profile forms today. The bottom of that profile, as you can see, if you look in the data box, bottom says 5923, top says 6231. It's trading at 6285. 
If Shake Shack closes above that today and then again tomorrow, HD, well, this would be a suggestion to you and I that it should continue to move higher. Now, I don't know if it's found a bottom or not, one of the tools that I use to identify a bottom, but just because it may or may not doesn't mean that there's not one that's out there. So you can also use these profile levels to say, hey, it's now doing something it hasn't been able to do for quite some time out here, and this would suggest that it does want to move higher. Now, we've got that real gap to the downside. That could be a resistance area and around the 71 and change level, but that's what the daily time frame is showing. The weekly time frame is then saying, well, if you can close above and maybe change that trend on the daily basis, what price ought to be able to do is get up to the top of its weekly profile. So your target, your initial target out here is going to be 65.86. Now the monthly, the beautiful thing about the monthly is that it is a bullish structured profile and the uh, top of that box is 78.31. So 65.86, 78.31, are your price targets. Remember, this chart here does not have today's activity. We're just trying to scan to see if there was a bottom, and voila, there was a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. There really were two of them formed with hammers. So Shake Shack is, at least shareholders, are most certainly trying to uh, form and identify a uh, bottom out here. Uh, the, uh, the target level on a daily basis for Shake Shack using Stevie's tools is 103.76. That's its TD9 count resistance level. Of course, there's other resistance before price were to get up there. On the weekly time frame for Shake Shack out here, HD, we can see that what price did was it pulled back to test its breakout area at 58.15. We can see that the uh, green line had turned uh, red. Uh, that tells us about a meetup between price and the oscillator and change line in the 67 area out here. So if you're asking me which of the two should you take a trade in uh, to the upside, if, if you're a momentum trader, well, then you can do PayPal knowing where you've got resistance. If you are a trying to buy a bottom uh, with the intent that, okay, it's been a solid bottom, I think we've just proven that the uh, daily and weekly at least have lined up to where they uh, have, have formed that bottom type pattern so that you go ahead and, and take the trade. So uh, um, depending on your back, your, your nature, you need, you'd like to see a second close above 62.31. You'd certainly like to see a close above that today out there to suggest that a change in trend may be in order for Shake Shack. So uh, uh, HD, thanks so much for writing in. Much appreciated. We've got a question here from Willie. Willie wants to take a look at ticker symbol here, LX. So let's go take a look at uh, that and see what uh, that is. LX is um, Lex, Lex, Lexine Fintech. Lexin Fintech. Okay. It is what it is. It is an IPO that takes us back into the uh, 2018, January 2018 timeframe. Uh, prices trade above the top of its daily, above the uh, weekly. Nothing in the monthly timeframe chart. Uh, this suggests you want to buy this, you're not in. So when we come back from this break, we're going to go take a look at uh, how this has uh, given you a, a, a nice topping signal. Price should pull back to 1306, to 1331. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 96. S&P is up uh, two points out there. Let's continue looking at the uh, ticker symbol LX. That is Lex Fintech Holdings out here. And uh, we can see that price is trading above the uh, daily and the weekly profiles out there. But uh, those profiles are not going to be used to help us identify topping patterns. What would help us identify topping patterns, for example, the TD setup nine count pattern. So when this equity formed its most recent bottom, it was back here on the trading day of December 13th. Voila, it was bar number nine of a TD nine count. Now what it's done is it's moved up and it formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It did this on uh, Friday, January the 10th. It had follow through uh, yesterday. Oh, wait a minute. No, I've got the 11th. So it's missing the 13th. So my system is chugging along here, but uh, it hasn't completely filled in everything. Very, no, that's just picking up yesterday's data. My apology there. But here's really what I wanted to, what we do know is it's trading below Stevie's green line out there. You both yesterday and now today, you've got the topping signal. And this would suggest that this could pull back to 1166 out here. That is the breakout here. But it suggests that it wants to pull back further. At least that's what the daily time frame. And you're looking to enter this. So we're going to still suggest at this date here, watch the 1331, 1306 level inside this. Uh, uh, symbol on the weekly time frame chart. The area to watch, give or take penny wise, is around 1308. That is Stevie's green line. Uh, no topping signal here on the weekly time frame chart. That's okay. The, the daily right now is ruling it. Nothing to, nothing to, on the weekly side, nothing to. Um, suggest that this doesn't want to continue higher and that this is just a topping signal on a daily basis to go ahead and pull price back to a, a support level. And so you're in between that 1308, 1306, 1331 uh, level, uh, unless there's something that uh, transpires, uh, you know, uh, on the way down or something like that. But that's how, that's how I would take a look at it. Uh, Willie, I hope that that uh, helps you out with regard to a uh, ticker symbol LX and thanks for writing in. Uh, I don't see any other questions that have come by email. I believe that there was one inside the den with regard to the spy. And what was the question with regard to the spy? So let me take a look at it out here. The question was short term levels of resistance on the spy. So let's go ahead and put this spy. Yeah, we could do this if you wanted to. All right. Why don't we do this? Uh, it may take just a moment to populate out here, but uh, we're going to take a look at the SPY. We can do this with the ETF, and, and with this, I can provide for you the daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly uh, profiles. Now, my experience is I'd rather uh, rely upon the uh, equity futures contracts, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you don't need me to harp on that, but you're looking for 
Uh, what was it? Resistance level, support levels? What was it? Uh, where was the question here? I'm just looking for it. My apology. Uh, but da, 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 da. man, comes and goes. Spy. Uh, just short-term levels of resistance. Well, you asked for levels of resistance on the spy. When we take a look at this chart out here, and that was Jimmy. I think you're Jimmy. You're asking about short or, or levels of resistance out here. Now, when we take a look at this this set of tools. Take a look at the uh, daily. The weekly, the monthly, the quarterly, man, everything is above those resistance levels, TAS market profiles. Um, so where's the next resistance level? Short term, unfortunately, I've got some issues. I've got some data feed issues, so I don't have my short term time frame charts up here, uh, you know, that I can 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 post you back to. But I just simply want to give you maybe the, the bigger picture out here. How, how can I do that? Well, but take a look at the S&P 500. So you're asking where is resistance out here? So let's use the S&P cash. On this chart, and this is really helpful when price is above, you know, like a TD9 count breakdown level or it's at all-time highs or it's above, there's no TAS market profile. So here we can take a look at our horizontal trading ranges on this chart. Uh, what we have, Jimmy, is we have the daily, weekly, and monthly. And what we can see here is that the S&P 500 has run into its monthly horizontal trading range. That's about 32.97. The daily is 33.19, and the weekly is 33.60. So those are really your resistance levels that we have out here uh, inside the S&P um, in taking a look at uh, daily, weekly, and monthly timeframes out there. So I hope that helps you out if I take a look at the ES Mini now. So the ES Mini is going to look different than the S&P 500. And what the ES Mini is suggesting to uh, to you, Jimmy, is that where it wants to head to is 33.59 to 3402. Yes, I don't have the daily profiles up here. I can add those. Give me a second here to uh, do that. Um, and so here are the dailies. You'll see the dailies are really up in that same general area. So with regard to the futures contract, I know you're taking the side, you're taking the downside side of the uh, market out here. And yes, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. No doubt about that. That's a part of the Rose Momentum Indicator signal. And it's like that through a plethora of symbols. And it says that you need to be cautious. However, are there other real sell signals out here to suggest that you or somebody else take that uh, short position? Now, from an intraday standpoint, now you may be an intraday trader. But I've got folks that are listening in, right? And I don't want them to confuse my language. And, and, and you know, maybe you're looking at a 10 or a 30 minute chart or something along those lines. So really just trying to give you the, the bigger picture. But, you know, even using these larger time frames, or here's a 30 minute time frame we can use to try to make a determination. Oh, okay, so they, we, you do have price now below perigee. Okay, so that's good. So that would be a short term positive. It's not, though, before. It's not below that level, a uh, key level that came in yesterday at about 431, I believe, in the afternoon. Um, but it's not below that level uh, for the uh, for the Dow, which has been weaker over the last you know week, we'll, we'll say, or whatever, or the Russell 2000. Yeah, you've got to tread very carefully out here. I, I really think you should tread very carefully. This is still a buy the dip market. It still is, even at this point in time. Um yeah, I mean, the, the advanced decline, the, here, here uh, let me do, I can do this for a short term. Let me fire this up here because let's just say this way I can try to help out, you know, everybody for their different uh, time frame. So let me, if short of some type of topping pattern, and I don't have my short term time frame chart, so I can't go there to determine whether there is or there isn't. So let's not spend time there. But what I can do Historical data is still being loaded. What the heck? Um, so strange. Some of these, uh, there we go. So in this case, what I'm going to do is pull this over here. Now what this is, we're taking a look at the TAS market profiles, and we're taking a look at their 60-minute, 240-minute, daily and weekly. And so, Jimmy, another reason to really consider treading slowly, let's just start with the 60-minute time frame. Um, I've got one more time frame I could look at. I do have a, a way to pull up a 30-minute time frame. I don't know if I have it on this computer yet. 
But here's what you do know. Right now, as we speak, um, that move lower was some kind of news event out there, right? Some, something. I saw some folks posting some things in the den when I was busy doing other stuff. Let me tell you about market breadth. On a 60-minute time frame, it's very bullish as we speak right now. There's 98 stocks from a 60-minute time frame within the S&P 500 trading above the top of their 60-minute profile. Oh, 285. 285 versus 115. Yes, tread light, my friend. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, the opening call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 66. S&P is off about one point out there. Uh, Jonathan was asking, uh, was indicating that the NASDAQ composite uh, had generated a, uh, a sequential sell signal. Uh, so, John, I'm assuming that it just fired off the uh, 13 uh, count out there, um, but hasn't closed back below, obviously, to, to give you a confirmation of a sequential sell. Um, but but I, I, I'm pretty sure that it's got to be it because we're up at all time highs. Uh, and the question is, does it have any you know meaning or something like that, any significance? And, and the answer is, yeah, it, it joins a list of reasons to be concerned. 
to absolutely be concerned, to anticipate. But it's and it's all about trying to time this thing, right? And when I say a, a host of other things, look, here's a road momentum indicator that is going. Yesterday was bar number seven. Today is going to be bar number eight of a TD setup, nine count. So we've got these patterns that are in place. And then take in the case of the NASDAQ composite, geez, it at least first has to close below its oscillator and change line around 91, 91 out there. Um, it joins the weekly time frame chart, give or take, because I don't have today's data, with a nice A to B equals CD pattern. You know, a bearish reversal candle on this would confirm a butterfly sell, uh, but it's not there. We've got to wait for that on a weekly basis. We're, we're, not, we're not there. And then it would need to close below 89.58 to really be of significance out there, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be worth the trade on a daily time frame once we get a decent sell signal. And on the monthly time frame chart here, price is moving higher, doing it with less relative uh, energy out there. So all types of reasons to keep, um, you know, keep our eye on the ball out here. It, it, it is just it, it is just looking like 2020 is going to be um, maybe a difficult market to navigate. So we'll just simply rely on these patterns that have been working. We'll keep our eyes on support and resistance. We'll look at market breadth. We'll look at everything we can to assist each and every one of you out there. Thanks so much for joining me on Terrific Tuesday. Have a great afternoon. Stay tuned. Two great hours coming to you next. David White, your favorite polar bear, Tom O'Brien, and I'll be back with you on uh, Weird Wednesday. Take care, folks.